Good evening, I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to the Spot on Weather special video. Does October foreshadow the winter, the coming winter? I thought this was a real interesting topic to talk about. Um, in this particular image, you notice I have some pumpkins here with some frost on the top of them, um, some of those chillier October mornings. So we really want to take a look um, on if October really does impact the upcoming winter as far as the temperatures. I'm focused solely on temperatures this evening. So let's take a look. So the purpose was to look at October temperatures, all this being past data for both cold and warm winters. Now the winter period runs from December 1st to the end of February, so that would be the meteorological winter <coughs> classification. We're looking at the temperatures in October and then comparing them to the following winter season across the eastern U.S. Are those temperatures above normal, below normal um, in October? And then what did that mean for the following winter? What I, My goal of this was to identify potential patterns potentially linking October temperatures to the following winter season temps. All right, so we're going to start off. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at four colder than normal winters across the eastern U.S. and I'm going to look at four warmer than normal winters across the eastern U.S. and each of these graphics or slides you're going to notice on the left here I'm going to show October temperatures for the particular year that I'm interested in looking at. All right and, and anything um, generally in the orange or yellow shading indicates above normal temperatures of course, the brighter the orange, the more drastic or above normal temperatures are. Anything in the blue on the graphics here on the left uh, are below normal temperatures. And then, of course, anything in the gray is near normal temperatures. Meanwhile, on each of the upcoming slides on the right, you'll notice a graphic here for the December to February winter season. Anything in the green is generally below normal temperatures, or if it's blue, it's below normal. And then anything in the yellow, oranges, and reds is above normal temperatures for that particular winter season. So let's take a look. I'm going to start off with the cold winter of 2010-2011. Here you can kind of see what the temperatures look like in that particular winter. Very cold generally east of the Rocky Mountains, below normal, all the way down to the Gulf Coast and Florida. But there weren't many above normal areas as far as the mean temperature, average temperature goes in the December 2010 to February 2011 winter. And then let's take a look at the October temperatures in 2010. So what do they look like? We had warmer than normal temperatures across Montana into Wyoming, parts of the Dakotas and the Northern Plains. That's where the greatest above normal temperatures were located. And then across the Mid-Atlantic, we had slight above normal temperatures, you know, only in the order of one to two degrees Fahrenheit, however. And then in general, it was fairly close to normal across the Eastern seaboard, East Coast in October of 2010. And then we got that colder than normal winter. The next cold winter we'll take a look at. This is um, the winter of 2014-15 from December to February. Notice how much below normal things were from the Midwest to the East Coast up to New England. Um, and then how much above normal the temperatures were there across the western U.S. in this particular winter. Here is October of 2014 showing a fairly mild October along the U.S. West Coast and in the Northern Plains, parts of the South Central U.S., the Southern Plains. Even up into New England, it was um, slightly above normal on the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, all the way down to the Mid-Atlantic to Southeastern Virginia. And the only real cool of the normal spots in October of 2014 was over Florida and then over parts of the Midwest, Eastern Iowa, Northern Illinois, Wisconsin, into Indiana in parts of Ohio, but that really was only on the order of one, potentially two degrees Fahrenheit below normal, so not anything earth shattering. The next cold winter we'll take a look at is December to February, December 2000 to February 2001. Now this again was that trip, the third year of that triple dip La Nina, and we're going right into this pattern um, this year with a triple dip La Nina. The third winter in a row, we're gonna start with La Nina conditions. Although the big difference here with this one is the El Nino or the La Nina is expected to fade as we get into middle to latter winter. But the December 2000 to February 01 winter shows below normal temperatures, you know, anywhere from the Rockies all the way to the East Coast. You can see the coolest of the normal temperatures were located over the Missouri Valley, 
parts of Missouri, Kansas, eastern Kansas, up to Iowa. And then this were the, these were the temperature anomalies, uh, the mean temperature anomalies. Um, actually, this is, uh, boy, I don't like when it does this. We're going to have to disregard this one because for some reason it pulled up June um, instead of the December to, or the October 2000 period. So we'll have to take a look at that. I'll have to get back. Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes they change on you and you have those tabs across your screen. And uh, yeah, so um, let's just discount that year for right now. And then the third, let's take a look at this winter then. We'll look at this third uh, colder than normal winter across the eastern U.S. This was uh, December of 2002 to February of 2003. Notice the below normal temperatures in green from the Ohio River Valley up to New England down into the southern U.S. and Florida and then above normal temperatures west of the Rocky Mountains all the way to the west coast. And these were the mean temperature anomalies generally across the United States as a whole much below normal across the northern plains in October as well as below normal across New England and above normal temperatures across the mid-Atlantic down to the southeast. So we had above normal temperatures southeast of the mid-Atlantic and there still was a colder than normal winter season that followed. Looking at the warm winters, this was um, December 2012 to February 2013. These were the warmer than normal winters across the eastern U.S. You notice the yellow and the orange coloring here, um, much above normal. And then also you see below normal temperatures across the east or the southwestern U.S. this particular winter, um, December 2012 to February 2013. And then this was the October of 2012. Look how below normal things were uh, generally from the Rockies all the way into the central U.S., northern plains, um, generally all the way to the Appalachian Mountains, really, down to the Gulf Coast. Below normal October in 2012. But this was the resultant winter season that followed. And then we look at another warm winter. This was um, December 2011 to February 2012. Uh, this is showing much above normal temperatures across the Midwest and New England down to southeastern U.S. Um, not much in the way of cooler than normal temperatures in the winter of 2011-2012. This was October of 2011. The October preceding the winter and notice how much below normal temperatures are across the eastern U.S. all the way down. Look at this. South Alabama, South Mississippi, South Georgia, 4 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit below normal on the mean temperature in October of 2011. But yet it was a warmer than normal winter. And then this particular warm winter, the next one we'll take a look at, this would be the December 2015-16 winter season. The 2015-16 winter season. Uh, yeah, this one was a very warm winter across New England, down to the Mid-Atlantic, even parts of the Midwest, very anomalously warm across these areas. And part of this was really attributed to that very strong polar vortex. And then we also had a strong El Nino that particular winter. Here was the October 2015 temperature departures from normal, the mean temperature departures from normal in degrees Fahrenheit. Notice the below normal across New England down into um, the Mid-Atlantic. And then much above normal across the western U.S. in this particular October. And then, you know, below normal across the east, but then above normal during the winter season. Believe, yeah, this is the last winter we'll take a look at. We're going to take a look at, um, this is the winter of 2001-2002, showing above normal temperature uh, readings across New England stretching across to the upper Midwest, including Michigan and Wisconsin, well above normal that winter season, as well as mild conditions down the mid-Atlantic, down into Florida, as well as parts of the northern plains. The only cool spot or below normal area in the winter of 2001-02 was over uh, Idaho, down into parts of Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. Now, this these were the October temperatures preceding that winter. This, was, uh, this would be October of 2001. So is there a relationship? Let's, let's, what I really discovered here in the video is looking at the four cold and four warm winters across the eastern U.S., there was no direct correlation identified um, between the October temperatures and the following winter. Now, of course, these numbers are different in the video tonight because, um, for example, that one winter season or the one October time frame wasn't there. Um, so I'd have to go back and look at that. But in general, um, the warm Octobers produce cold winters in the eastern U.S., which would be the exact opposite effect of what we think. 
Three cold, colder than normal Octobers produced warmer winters in the eastern U.S. Again, this opposite effect, again. And then only one warmer October directly correlated with a following warm winter in the eastern U.S. Um, so this truly does indicate the other climate drivers or teleconnections were in play during those winter seasons. All right, so now just a quick look here to end tonight's short video. We take a look at the extended outlook um, and this is a very interesting pattern by the 15th of October. That would be this upcoming Saturday of 2022. Um, look at this anomalous upper level ridge right along that western coast of Canada, extending well to the north. And as this goes up and builds, downstream the trough deepens. In fact, we have a, um, a low there in the vicinity of Hudson Bay. Uh, it's going to continue to provide those northwesterly and westerly winds, those cooler temperatures across parts of the upper Midwest down into the eastern U.S. as a whole. And then we have a negative North Atlantic oscillation. Look how strong this Greenland block is by this Saturday. Now this is a European, uh, this is a European ensemble prediction system. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. So, and then look at this on the right, showing. This would be the, uh, what's this, Valentine, that would be late on the 19th of October <clears throat> next week. We still see that fairly strong ridge across um, parts of the North Atlantic building into southern Greenland. And then another ridge off the western parts of Canada that remains in place with that downstream trough across the eastern U.S. again. That will produce cooler than normal temperatures. Here is the um, Hudson Bay Low, the upper low, just sitting there in in general the same position and this is the extended outlook <clears throat> from NOAA from the Climate Prediction Center and you know it's been a while and I've watched I've been taking a look at these uh, on a daily basis over the last week it's been pretty consistent not really much in the way of expected changes in the probabilities of below normal and above normal temperatures um, this is October 16th to 20th much below normal across parts of the east higher probabilities of those temperatures occurring and then much above normal or higher probability of above normal temps across the Pacific Northwest. And then when we go for to October 18th to 24th time period, look, we still have high probability of below normal across parts of the Mid-Atlantic and in general across the east. And then above normal continues across the Pacific Northwest. And you kind of see the um, lower probabilities of above normal move slightly to the east, but not a whole lot. So this is, this is a real interesting pattern we're in right now. And that's really why I wanted to take a look at the previous October's temperature departures in degrees Fahrenheit from the PRISM Climate Database there at Oregon State University. And I want to look at the following winter temperature anomalies just to see if there's any direct correlation of what October felt like. Did the, you know, the following winter feel the same? Colder, you know, so, for example, if you get a colder than normal October, do you get a colder than normal following winter? or vice versa, a warmer than normal October, a warmer than normal winter. Really, there's no direct correlation here. Um, you know, this is, again, this is 2011. This was a warm winter, um, 2011, 2012. And then look, below normal temperatures in October across the east, and that did not pan out. Um, so I really didn't find anything in the data that you, you could definitely say, ah, yeah, there's definitely a relationship there. Um, but these are the kind of things I like to look at and research just various patterns of the past to see if there's any kind of connection that can really give us a clue about how this upcoming winter is going to be. Um, of course, I just released my winter forecast or my winter outlook, and uh, I really do believe that the trough will remain in place across the eastern U.S. for the majority of the winter and that ridge along this general area here, the U.S. West Coast up to western Canada. All right, um, that wraps it up tonight. Um, thank you so much for watching and subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm definitely going to have to go back now. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back. You know, I got to go back and look at this. This is, uh, I wanted to see what these uh, October of 2000 looked like, temperature anomalies. For some reason, uh, it didn't save right when I, this was supposed to be October and ended up being June. So that's, that's a considerable difference in what I'm doing tonight in the video. But anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and take a look at that and keep researching these potential connections, um, whether it's sea surface temperature anomalies to the following winters, um, snow cover in Eurasia, or the ice, ice levels, you know, ice extent in the Arctic. We'll keep taking a look at this and, and, and see if there's any connections, just, just curiosity. 
All right, that's it, everybody. Until next time, take care. And by the way, I want to mention one more thing. Teleconnections videos, my weekly discussions, will be coming up here shortly. Um, we're going heading into mid-October, and it's time to really um, look at those teleconnections and to see the upcoming forecasts for the various oscillations and uh, also look at the long wave pattern across the globe and see how things are panning out. All right, everybody, take care. Until next time, God bless everyone.